วินเทอร์โรสพรีเทนไบพันวดีพงรดาเคอิทิเมกินเอพิโซด12 Hearing a car pulling up in front of the house, I r e h u r r i e d l y p i c k up her case and rush out to where the driver was waiting to take her luggage and put it in the boot before opening the back door of the car for her. Eric got into the car. And was taken aback to see that someone else was already sitting inside, waiting for her. You, she exclaimed, startled. Oh, come on! There's still a respectable distance between us. You don't have to scream. e l i g a n t smoking smile made e v e r y even more angry. Are you surprised that I'm traveling with you? Actually, I wasn't intending to go against our agreement, but it was necessary. Don't forget that you are a stranger here, there, and you might not get the cooperation you need for your job if I don't go with you. And by the way, has your boyfriend changed his mind about coming? He would be here otherwise. What kind of person is he? Crazy, speaking like this. If I were not under an obligation to Cody, I would change my mind and not go to work there. I r e f u s e determined not to lose this battle of words. She said aloud, "Worry about your own love life. Now it's your turn, and you are silent." Are you angry? Good. Then you won't speak again. I r e t h o u g h t smugly, turning her attention to the view outside the car, until they arrived at Rio Santos Dumont Airport, from where planes to Sao Paulo took off every 30 minutes. I r e was pleased that they did not have to sit together on the plane, otherwise. She would have felt inexplicably discomfited. Sao Paulo was only 253 miles from the old j a n e i r o so the plane soon landed at Sao Paulo c o n c o n h a r f i e l d City Airport. At the airport, a Latino man, rather short, but when compared with Enrique, came up to greet them. Ricardo. This is Iria Winston. She has come to modernize our accounting system. Pleased to meet you. Ricardo smiled in a friendly way. How do you do? Please call me Iri, like everyone else. The three of them walk over to the four-wheel drive car, with a dark-skinned driver at the wheel, waiting for them, in front of the airport terminal. They drove into Sao Paulo city, sited on a plateau about 30 miles from the Atlantic coast. The city was up to date with modern buildings and resembles Los Angeles in terms of its total area of almost 600 square miles, its highway network, and the fact that it was almost permanently blanketed in smog caused by pollution. In other ways, with its c r o w d e s of modern skyscrapers and traffic jams on the road, it was similar to New York. I really thought that coming to Brazil and having no chance to visit Sao Paulo would be like going to America and not seeing New York. Let me tell you a little about Sao Paulo," said Enrique. "Is." In the southeast of Brazil, founded in 1554, it used to be just a small town. Until in the middle of the 18th century, it became the center of the coffee industry. The government sold off land cheaply and paid the traveling expenses of foreign immigrants from European countries, like Italy and Germany. In Japan, to come and settle here and help develop the legend. 
are you fed up of listening to me yet? Irish's eyes expressed key interest, so he, so he continued. The Japanese developed their business sector here until it became the largest settlement of Japanese outside their own country. As for the Germans and Italians, they wanted to be owners of plantations and land, growing crops like coffee, sugarcane, and getting paid in cash. Even in the present, the two most powerful groups in Sao Paulo are the Japanese and the Italians. The diligence of the Japanese combined with the free and easy lifestyle of the Italians have molded the character of the polystyrene people who shoulder responsibility, are competitive and very ambitious. They work hard and pray hard, demanding the best in entertainment, but they can get along with other people well. You will observe all this for yourself as you go around. Barry was in course in listening, wondering if Enrique also displayed these characteristics until he finally fell quiet and Irene chased away such thoughts. She stared at the tall border buildings constructed right alongside others that were over 100 years old. The stores here seemed no different to their recent New York counterparts. And she also saw many Japanese and Italian shops and restaurants. Enrique did not say anything else, but spoke to Ricardo in Portuguese. It must have been on a serious issue, as both their voice sounded stern. Sometimes I stole a glance at Enrique while he was talking, but no more than that. If she were caught out, she would mail with embarrassment. The four-wheel drive finally left the trunking city center and stopped in front of a big white house with a modern reddish orange roof. The grounds of the house were spacious, with a terrace in front of the house decorated with a variety of plants and, and expensive large green lawn surrounded by flower beds aglow with color. It was evident that everything was well tended. Behind the house, there seemed to be even more land, but at that time, Irene could only guess at what it was used for. Her eyes only stopped at guessing at everything when she heard a voice announcing, We have a life. We'll stay here tonight. You go to the plantation tomorrow. As he finished speaking, Enrique walked in front of her into the house while the car drove off with Ricardo. Iris heard injection of help and obstinate attitude meant that she had to struggle to carry her own cases into the silent house. No one else seemed to be there except for the trailing pot plants and other bigger specimens darted around. Irene locked her bags into an upstairs room. You have to help yourself because the staff didn't know that you would stay here before going to the plantation. It's lucky that they clean the place regularly. Otherwise, you would have had to dust your room too. I have asked Ricardo to go and tell them. So they will be here tomorrow. Rest yourself first. I have some urgent business to attend to. When I have finished, I will come and collect you so we can go and eat in the town. In Enrique's absence, Ali grew tired of sitting alone in her room. She went out and lounged on the terrace in front of the house for a while. But still, Enrique did not return. Finally, she decided to go and walk behind the house where she discovered a tennis court and a large swimming pool bending over to splash the water with her hand. Iris saw that it was clean, so she thought about having a swim. It was still early in the afternoon, and hadn't Elika said that he would come back for her in the evening. That being the case, 
she still had a lot of time in her hands. So her mind made up. She hurried to change into her cherry red swimsuit. It was fortunate that she had packed it, but knowing that Sabolo was near the sea, she had been sure that she would have a chance to go to the beach. Ari became so engrossed in swimming that she was taken completely unawares when a man's strong hand came from behind her and covered her eyes. Who is it? Let me go. The feminine sound of laughter announced who it was. I told you to let me go. Didn't you hear me? Enrique Lily's Irie, as she demanded without her having to fight. As soon as she had secured her freedom, without waiting for an explanation, she laced an arm to slap Enrique across the face. However, perceiving her intent, Enrique grabs her arm before it could reach its target. Let me go! I will again scream. Why should I be so stupid? If I did, you would attack me again. Ah, don't play around. There is nobody here to see. You can flirt with me if you want. Your boyfriend won't know unless you tell him. You're mad. Keep your passion and use it on your girl. Like the redhead you used to hang out with. Don't waste it here. Why are you so different from Sophia and other women? Everybody knows that kissing and falling are normal for American girls. They start dating when they are just 13 years old. Don't make a mountain out of a molehill. Go ahead. I will tell Cody and Monica, your girlfriend, when I get back and leave it to them. To scold you. You are treating me? Carry on. Monica understands me very well, but I would like to know what you would say to your brother. As he finished speaking, Enrique pulled Iris' body still in the water into his <clears> deep <throat> breast. He held both her hands tightly so she could neither escape nor even avert her face as he bent over her and imprinted a hot, passionate kiss on her lips. Limo, Batida de Lima, light sarum, not sweet as I expected. He muttered, suppressing a laugh before proclaiming triumphantly, Remember, don't try to beat me in the future. And with that, he got out of the pool and walked off. Outraged, Irie Cape went to her feelings by beating her hands on the water until they hurt. Getting out of the pool, she went back to her room to shower and change, fervently vowing that she would not go into town with Enrique. However, her hunger narrowed such thoughts, and before long, she was going along with him. Enrique took her to an Italian restaurant located in a tall building in the middle of the city. The atmosphere was romantic, with candlelight and the air perfumed with the scents of fresh roses. The crowded city, with its dirtiness and pollution, made the poor, made the Paulistanos enjoy life in the shade rather than in the sunlight. Restaurants and other evening entertainment places were scattered everywhere around the city. As they were eating together, Ari observed that Enrique sitting opposite her was not in the least concerned about her silence and scorn, but spoke as if nothing had happened that afternoon. When he spoke about business matters, his seriousness made Irene temporarily forget her anger. Both sides of the road were lined with coffee plantations, stretching as far as the eye could see. Looking out of the car window, the following morning, Ari could see nothing but dark green foliage contrasting in the bracing sunlight with the purplish 
black soil. The coffee bushes were evenly spaced out, with here and there plantation workers digging around them. It was extremely hot, but her brother had told her that, in comparison with the old, the weather here was cooler and less predictable, with cool days followed by a hot spell, then a succession of rainy days. To be prepared for any eventuality, Irie had brought a jacket and an umbrella with her. This country constantly needs manpower, unlike the States, Enrique explained. Coffee plantations need a lot of care and attention, right from planting the first seeds. We grow the seeds in nursery beds for a year until they are small plants and can be transplanted into the area prepared for them. After that, they need water and fertilizer all the time until they are three years old and have white flowers followed by green berries. We call these cherries, not the red cherries that you see in America. A smile spread over his face. See, over there, those plants are in bloom. I will look where he was indicating and saw that the green bushes were covered in white flowers. If he had not told her, she would have thought it was a flower nursery and not another coffee plantation like the others they had passed. Within six to eight months, the green cherries ripened and turned a dark red. The part that we call coffee is the bean in the cherries to kernels. All things he was telling her fascinated Irie, and she listened quietly and attentively, not in the least troubled by his foreign accent. All the coffee has to be picked by hand. He stressed, with all these bushes, using a machine would save on both labor costs and time. Irie commented. He turned to stare at her. He had never thought that an American woman like her would be interested in this kind of thing. She was different, so dif so very different from all the other women he knew. What you say is quite right. We tried this once, but machines don't have brains. They can't compete with people. And another thing, the cherries don't weapon simultaneously. The workers have to go to the same plantation many times, selecting and picking the ripe cherries until they have all been harvested. Some skilled workers can pick 45 kilograms by hand in a day. After the cherries have been picked, what happens next? I thought someone who is a specialist in accountancy like you would be only interested in figures. Enrique could no longer hide his amazement at her interest and far with enthusiasm quickly continue. The cherries go through a final selection process. Then only the best, perfect berries are put into the machine to separate the outer kernel from the bean. After they have been categorized according to their quality and aroma. The beans are spread in the open to be dried by the sun. This takes about from four to eight days and needs manpower again. As the beans have to be raked to make sure that they get even exposure to the sun. When they are well dry, they are put in sacks and sent by truck to the port at Santos, waiting to be sent abroad and sold. The voice in which Enrique told her all this grow with a pride that Irie could not fail to detect. Her general interest prompted Irie to ask, Did you have experience of growing coffee before? Irie's question innocently asked, touched a raw nerve, and Enrique's face flushed red with anger. 
before he answered bluntly, I was born and grew up on this plantation. Remember, and don't ask this kind of stupid question again. He stared fixedly ahead. I'm sorry, I refalter. I didn't intend to upset you. Her soft voice made him turn to her with a more gentle expression. It wasn't your fault. It's me who should apologize. Enrique was obviously troubled by some matter that he was turning over in his mind. Otherwise, the veins at his temples would not have stood out so prominently. Remembering her status as an employee, I really did not dare to ask any more, and she looked aimlessly out of the car window. Mm-hmm. Bang, bang, bang. Oh my God. Enrique screamed in terror 